he said this was simply unenforceable. Well, I'm heartbroken and utterly appalled at what I read this morning. I have spent 10 years uh, since I founded Fathers for Justice trying to give children a right in law to see their parents and grandparents. And this report is it's, it's absolutely heartbreaking. It's a monstrous sham because it condemns our children to living in a society without fathers. It's going to feed the epidemic of mass fatherlessness and it's also going to become a social catastrophe. We saw the riots in London this summer. We saw the consequences of what happens when children grow up without fathers. And this report you know, merely restates this, this whole issue that somehow it's morally and socially acceptable for us to live in a society where fathers are to- regarded as totally being unimportant to the upbringing and welfare of people Now, people, of, might, people might regard that as an overstatement simply because the law is actually dealing with the situation the way it is. The law doesn't create relationship and marital breakups. The law has to deal sometimes with the fallout. And thankfully, it seems from the calls we get on this station that by and large, the vast majority of relationship breakups in the end settle down. And thankfully, when both parties agree and can agree, both parents do see the children. So are, are you not talking about a minority in this case? <laughs> I wish I was, because I could, I could pack up, go home and get on with my own family life, Paul. I mean, if that was the case, I would be thrilled. I would be delighted. The fact is, in this country, one in three children grows up without a father. The fact is that in this country... Without a father or without a father figure? Without man. a father. Without a father in the family household. These are government figures. The fact is in the family courts, 200 children a day lose contact with their fathers and with, the, with their parental uh, grandparents. So this is not a minority thing. We can't sweep this under the carpet. You can see the consequences of a father's prison on every single street corner. A massive explosion in young offending. One in four teenagers is now a criminal. We've had the epidemic in sort of teenage pregnancies and abortion, etc. You know, you don't need me to tell you, you know, because you can see for yourselves what happens when we remove fathers from families. Uh, Matt, just stay on the line for a moment, if you will. Yeah, uh, we're listening to that is a leading family lawyer, Marilyn Stowe. Marilyn, you've uh, listened to what Matt had to say. Um, yep, what do you I'm, think about well, it? Well, I'll tell you, I, I've re- read through this report. And what struck me is the composition of the panel are entirely people who deal only with children. Have a look at them and you'll see they are headed by a man who is an accountant. And when you actually think about the deficiencies of children law as it is at the moment, we've had children law in place for 20 odd years now. We don't pay sufficient respect for the other people who are involved in family breakdown, the parents and the grandparents. And this report is wholly, once again, child-centred. And, I and what's wrong what, with that, though? Because surely the most vulnerable person in any yeah, breakup agree, is the child. I agree no that problem the welfare there. of the child is paramount. However, parents, too, are entitled to respect and integrity, and so are grandparents. And that is completely lacking from this report. And it's a shame, because they had a chance to do something quite radical, look at society as it is now, how fathers are very involved with their children, far more than they were 20 20-odd years ago. But aren't family courts already under, already under huge pressure on this one? Yes. Fam- family courts... So where would the money come from, Marilyn? up the family courts, which is what they're suggesting. You know, all that kind of stuff, the administrative stuff, fine. No problem with it. But they had the opportunity to take a good look at what we need now with our modern society. And what we don't have is respect for the integrity of the whole, all the people caught up in family breakdown. OK, let's ask another question from a different point of view. To both of you, in fact, Matt, you might want to answer this as well. What about personal responsibility? What about, and maybe I'm dreaming of pie in the sky, but I'm on the third and final Mrs Ross now, so I know a bit about divorce, <laughs> and I've got five children, OK? What about the idea that rather than have to run to the courts and law and mediation and lawyers, with all respect to you... Marilyn, what you do is take some responsibility for your relationships, your commitments and your children. Well, there I disagree with Matt because I think that most cases do settle. I have to say most do. But where they do go to court, the father does have to jump through hoops to get meaningful contact and staying right with his children. And I think that needs really seriously looked at. Paul, can I just just interject here? Paul, all it takes is one parent to be unreasonable. For you to end up in court. And to be honest with you, courts are even the right place. 
Yeah, courts are there for criminals, not for parents. So okay, but, okay, but then, okay, but then again, and I've seen this, and I've got experience from, from my friends as well. Mm. You say it only takes one parent to be unreasonable. Fine. Yeah. In the heat of an emotional breakup, and all breakups after a commitment are emotional, particularly when there are children involved. Sometimes, though, you have to say, you know what? I'm going to walk away from this. I'll keep in touch. I'll give you all the support I can for three months or six months, and then we'll see. Rather than actually go into court or talk to a lawyer when it immediately becomes antagonistic. And the reason I say this is no, no. Let me finish my. Let me finish my. Let me finish my point. No, let me finish my point. No, no. What I'm saying to you is, you walk away from the scene of the friction. Now, in my last divorce, I did not cover your ears, Marilyn. I did not use a lawyer from my side, but I got, and I'm not casting aspersions on my previous part, my ex-wife's a lawyer. I got very confrontational letters sent to me directly which would have put me in a position of actually feeling you know and at times i resented them and they rank with them. i had to think you know what i've got to swallow this i've got to suck it up because there are bigger things at stake here but you've just hit the nail on the head the fact is the family courts are predicated on conflict and what we're campaigning for i'm sure Marilyn so agrees, more law would be more conflict but conflict more law out. more law would be more conflict then Sorry? More law, surely, would mean more conflict. We then. want less law. I mean, this is what the reports say. We actually want to ensure children, your children, you know, if you've got sons, I've got, I've got three boys. This isn't about me, because I actually see my children now. I, but I want my children to live in a country where they have rights to see their children. Because and that must I mean more law, that you can't mean less law, you want it enshrined in law. Can, can, well, no, I, no, can no, I, I just make the point that Matt is proving my point that the law as it stands at the moment shows no real respect for other people caught up in the conflict other than the child, and that's where we need to change. Can I just make a final point, Paul, which is to nail, there's a lie right at the heart of this whole issue, and they say they're acting in the child's interest. This report says it's acting in the child's best interest. The court say they're acting in the child's best interest, but do you know what? Nobody has ever kept any records on the outcomes of the children who have been for the family justice system. And if you want to see a secretive and brutal regime, you don't need to go to Libya, you don't need to go to Iran, you don't need to go to North Korea. Come and look at secret courts. You have secret courts in this country in the 21st century, progressive modern democracy, operating without account accountability and transparency. And that is a national disgrace. Although I would say, Matt... Uh, at, the that, at the heart of that, Matt, but surely at the heart of that, Matt, is the idea that actually were these to be held in public, they could be very damaging for the families and the children, which is why in some cases... There is, well, there's, there's actually not a shred of empirical evidence to support that claim whatsoever. And I would like to see that idea tested. I think we need accountability. Surely you're not advocating we have an unaccountable, unsackable, unelected judiciary operating in complete secrecy. That's what we have in tyrannical regimes in Iran and North Korea. We live in Great Britain. We're supposed to be democracy. We're supposed to be looking after our children. Yet, time and time again, we fail our children from Victoria, Columbia, to Baby P, to 200 children a day who there's contact in our family court. I don't know if they are socially acceptable or morally acceptable. And we do live in a democracy, which is why you've had your say this morning. Thank you very much, Matt O'Connor there, campaign for Fathers from Justice, and also leading family lawyer. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Marilyn Stowe, this is BBC London 94.9. It's now